live signal to be sure we are. There we are. Okay. So uh, this is the meeting of the Baltimore County Delegation on this, the 10th day, 10th day of March. And uh, we are going to have a voting session. But prior to that, we are blessed by the appearance of our senior senator in the state of Maryland, who's going to uh, address us for a little, a little bit of time and then even, I think, hang around for a few questions. Um, and so with that, I will, uh, a man who I'm sure needs very little, if any, introduction in the state of Maryland, Senator Ben Cardin, uh, also who once sat in the same, or stood at the same dais that uh, that uh, Speaker Jones stood at. So welcome, Senator, and uh, please take it away. Well, Mr. Chairman, first of all, thank you for the courtesy of being able to join you this morning. Uh, this is my delegation, Baltimore County. I am very amply represented uh, by my representatives. Thank you. Delegate Stein for being here on time. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, my colleagues, uh, Delegate Cardin and, and Senator uh, Hedelman, I'm very blessed. Uh, Madam Speaker, you have the best job uh, there is. Uh, everything after being Speaker of the House for me has been a little bit disappointing compared to being Speaker of the House, but it's a great honor to represent you all in the United States Senate. Uh, it is Team Maryland. I really want to make that clear. I work very, very closely with Senator Van Holland. The two of us uh, share uh, information, total information. Uh, we have where we work very closely with Congressman Mfume and Congressman uh, Ruppersberger for Baltimore County. Work with the county exec. Work with the delegation. Uh, it is Team Maryland. Reverend Jerome Stevens is on the call. He's my eyes and ears in Baltimore County. Uh, very fortunate to have him. Uh, he really acts as a bridge to so many of our great institutions in Baltimore County. So thank you, Jerome, for your for your service to the people of Baltimore County and, and Maryland. I, I just really make a couple uh, opening comments and then be glad to try to respond to any questions that, that you might have. The last Congress was a, a very active Congress, and now we are implementing the bills that were passed during the last two years. And every day, it seems like there's more grant opportunities and partnerships with local governments and private organizations in, in the county and state. Uh, and we are trying to get that information out as effectively as possible. We've done extremely well in Maryland. Uh, you all know that under the American Rescue Plan, you know, the, the, the money that went through the state. But Baltimore County received in total about $305 million that helped uh, Johnny Oshesky balance the budget and be able to maintain essential services during COVID-19. Uh, your Department of Education received over $300 million from the COVID relief packages. So we, we got through the pandemic. We're not through it yet, but we're able to maintain our local budgets thanks to the American Rescue Plan. The infrastructure bill is being rolled out as we speak. Uh, just last month, I was with President Biden uh, uh, with the Frederick Douglass Tunnel, which is going to be critically important for the East Coast of the United States uh, in Amtrak service and, and freight uh, service. That's that's a generational uh, change in the uh, rail service for, for our region. Uh, transit, we have a significant increase of dollars available for transit. We're going to work very closely with the Baltimore County delegation as to, and, and Governor Moore as to what your priorities are going to be in regards to bus or, or, or rapid rail, and we'll work with you very closely in regards uh, to that issue. Uh, a program that I authored, the Transportation Alternative Program, 10% of all of the transportation funding formulas go through a Transportation Alternative Program, basically at the direction of local governments to where you need monies for connecting communities through parks or through uh, uh, pedestrian paths, et cetera, you can use those funds uh, for those for those purposes. I do want to mention the PACT Act. That was the one for our veterans. I mentioned that because we're going to get a new CBOC, a, a, a Veterans a Community uh, uh, Health Center in Baltimore. People in Baltimore County will benefit from that. This is We have two new uh, CBOCs in Maryland, one in Prince George's County, one in Baltimore, to help our veteran community uh, that is going to be a, a major investment in health care for our veterans. Uh, the Safer Communities Act was critically important for, for mental health services. Uh, we are increasing dramatically our funds for behavioral health, uh, the opioid addiction issues. I've met with a lot of your uh, the officials as to how we can help deal with community support services for mental health. We have the 988 hotline to deal with suicide prevention. That's been funded. We have the chips and science bill as far as high tech and Baltimore County has a lot of high tech companies that are benefiting from it. And then of course the Inflation Reduction Act 
uh, on where we reduce the cost of health care. Insulin now is capped at $35 a month. Uh, petition drugs are costs are coming down. And we're, we're investing in climate and energy. And these grants are being rolled out as we speak. So there's a lot of opportunities for companies in Baltimore County and for Baltimore County oh, itself oh, uh, to benefit from these grant programs. So we want to help you. I chaired a small business committee. Uh, we are ex extremely excited about the increased opportunities. Uh, Maryland led the nation in the growth of small businesses last year, led by women-owned small businesses and minority-owned small businesses. Uh, we have been able to uh, increase our women's business centers from one to four over the last two years. We've established yeah. a veterans business outreach yeah. center. So we, we really want to make sure that we energize our small business growth and opportunity in, in our community. Let me uh, conclude on the new thing that I'll probably get more questions about than anything else. And that is in the last two Congresses, we've been able to, last two uh, budget cycles to do earmarks, congressional earmarks. Uh, I can go over the eight earmarks that were included in last year's uh, appropriation bills that were in Baltimore County. Uh, we welcome your suggestions on our website. We have a, a guidance as to how you can apply for, for congressional earmarks. We work with your universities. We work with local governments. We work with um, the private, nonprofit community. Uh, so we've done everything from the Liberty Community the, the, the Centers to the to JCC to uh, the Community College of Baltimore County to Goucher to UMBC to Sparrows Point. I go through the different areas in which we've been able to provide some additional help. So uh, the bottom line is we really want to help you. Our priorities in this Congress. Uh, we've already done this, is to deal with the violent crime in our community. Uh, that's probably our top priority. I, I met with the U.S. attorney, our delegation did, uh, in order to get more resources into the Baltimore region to deal with violent crime. Uh, I've met with the state's attorney of Baltimore City uh, in, the, in these efforts. Um, I met with the White House. We are. This is our top priority is to be a strong partner to bring down violent crime in our community. Uh, there's a lot of other issues that are going to be uh, going on during this Congress and uh, just welcome your thoughts. And remember, it is Team Maryland. We're all on the same team together working uh, with the state and county officials uh, to do what's best for the people of Baltimore County. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to you for any friendly questions you might have on a Friday morning. Well, I wish you all just the best. We appreciate you and your brevity because oftentimes people have questions. I haven't seen a hand go up yet, but maybe out of deference, people are just waiting. Um, I'm going to stand by for a second. And uh, if, uh, if, not, if nothing comes up, uh, we certainly did have a question about uh, something that's happening locally and wanted to know your outlook on it. And I'll start with that. Um, you may be aware that Baltimore City and Baltimore County uh, are cooperating. And I know this isn't a federal issue, but I just you live in the area. So this is a relevance. Uh, we're starting to talk about a joint um, sewer and water uh, a commission to talk about how we can have some shared responsibility for that. You know, you know that the city uh, grew in a strange way so that it had it, it, it administers those, but it administers it to not only Baltimore County, but several surrounding counties. I don't know if you're aware of it and we're make, I'm, doing, I'm making you aware of it and want to know um, your, if you have any outlook on that. Uh, Eric, I'm very much engaged in this. Uh, our delegation is I've been in conversations with the mayor, with the county exec, uh, with the uh, the officials at the Environmental Protection Agency here in Washington, uh, we have offered uh, resources in order to explore uh, a regional authority rather than having Baltimore City uh, directly uh, uh, and solely responsible uh, to maintain Baltimore City's impact into these decision making, but to broaden it. As you know, we have that type of a regional compact in the Washington area, which is working very, very well. Uh, so we do think it's time to modernize the way that water is managed. And of course, we have significant uh, problems in Back River, and uh, we are watching that very carefully. We've gotten resources to help Baltimore deal with this, but they need to make the fundamental changes that have not been made yet. And uh, so we are um, very much working uh, with uh, the federal partners to try to help Baltimore City get through this. Uh, and we do agree that there should be a, a regional aspect to the, the the water issues. We certainly do appreciate that it's all hands on deck for this because uh, it's something that needs attention. It has to be done deliberately, but as you say, it's something that uh, whose time's come. I'm going to recognize the delegate in a second, but I want to point out that uh, Jerome Stevens has placed, uh, we've passed along uh, in the chat, uh, contact information. So if any of you want to go to that, 
and, and do a quick copy and paste so you're sure that your staff or you have it. Um, take a look there. You can take a look. Uh, Delegate Bendari, how are you doing this morning? Would you like to ask a question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, thank you, Senator Cardin, for everything. Uh, uh, everything. And just a quick question uh, about the FBI headquarters site selections in our state offers transportation access, development, flexibility, and proximity to the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Um, any of your thoughts if our state will get that uh, FBI headquarters? Uh, Harry, thanks for the question. Uh, we were Team Maryland this week. Governor Moore led us off uh, two days ago before the General Services Administration and the FBI to make Maryland's case. Uh, there is no question under any objective standard, the FBI uh, headquarters should be located in Prince George's County, Maryland. There is not a question here. If you look at the five major standards, one, the carrying out the mission, our location is the best mission. We're we're the cyber center of the world, cybersecurity center, uh, synergy of, of our country. That's the that's the future of the FBI and a lot of its work. We have the academic centers, we have the training center. We have we we are the best location. If you look at cost, uh, and Senator Van Hollen did a, a really strong strong analysis of this. We are at least at least a billion dollars cheaper than the Virginia site. We think it's closer to $2 billion. This is the largest single project in the history of the General Services Administration, between four and $5 billion it's gonna cost. On the equity issues, and President Biden's issued the equity issues to help the underserved communities. There's only one county that has, that has a sites that is historically underserved, and that's Prince George's County. So from an equity point of view, it should be located in Prince George's County. We're ready to go today. The land is there. In Virginia, they have to clear the land. It's going to take three years before they can start. By any objective standard, it should be in the FBI. We made that case. We made the legal arguments. In last September, the uh, General Services Administration came out with guidelines that were clearly biased and really affected the integrity of the process and totally against congressional intent and the president's executive orders. I made that point very clearly two days ago to GSA that changed the standards. They put a thumb on the scale, giving Virginia 35 points out of 100 before we even start the, co the competition because of the mention of Quantico. That's ridiculous. So we've made that point. We're hoping they're going to change the standards, and we hope that Prince George's County will be the site of, of the FBI. We're all in on this. This is a critically important uh, uh, win for Maryland. We've got to win it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Madari. Excellent question. And now that shows that Baltimore County is interested in more than just Baltimore County. We're interested in helping all parts of the state. We appreciate that you're able to pivot and talk about them. Uh, Delegate Naraki, please, a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Cardin, thank you for joining us today. Great presentation. Um, just a uh, more of a, a statement, I guess, than a question. Just wanted to put it on your uh, radar screen. Um, there is a facility in our district in eastern Baltimore County in the Bullies Quarters area. It was the former CP Crane Power Plant facility. Um, I believe uh, some of our, our local officials, council members, and, and maybe even the county executive have, have uh, reached out to put it on uh, your office's radar screen. I wanted to as well. Um, we are seeking to turn that into a, a park. It's about 150 acres right on the, uh, the Chesapeake Bay there. Um, very uh, environmentally sensitive location. Uh, the county is uh, thrown some money into into the pot uh, to help uh, get that done. And um, we would uh, certainly appreciate your consideration and uh, your help uh, maybe to acquire some federal funds also to keep this uh, this land as a, a parkland uh, now, that the, now that the power plant is down. Uh, we're very much aware of this uh, uh, this uh, project. We want to do what the local community wants. We want to be your partner. We think we can help you in regards to a park. So yes, we think we can help. We know there's some conflict as to certain elements wanting different development there. That's a local decision. Sure. Uh, we very much uh, want as much open space as possible in lands that affect the Chesapeake Bay. So it, to us, a, a park makes abundant sense. And uh, if that is uh, the direction you're moving and it looks like you are, uh, we will try to be a partner. We might be able to come up with some resources to help you make that a reality. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I see we have another hand up. The uh, Venerable Vice Chair of ENT and mem longstanding member of our delegation, uh, Delegate Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senator. Thank you for being here and for your presentation and for all that you do for the state. 
Um, my question is about mass transit, and I wanted to ask if you could elaborate on the potential funding sources that the Infrastructure Act um, have for enhancing mass transit, especially potentially some revival of a east-west corridor, um, you know, for the for the Baltimore region. Right. Um, thank you, Dana. Baltimore has not been treated fairly by the state of Maryland in regards to transit. When you look at the investments that have been made in the Washington area, the investments have been made in the Baltimore area, there's no parity between the two regions. We were on target for the red line. It was not only, uh, we had a full funding agreement with the federal government. We had $900 million in the pipeline to start the, uh, the project going forward when Governor Hogan pulled the plug on it. It was not just important from the point of view of getting people from east to west. It was a statement about the viability of our region for transit-related economic development. And uh, that's a huge uh, plus for economic growth is to have uh, uh, rapid rail transit uh, uh, sites available. So in the infrastructure bill, uh, we were able to get a provision, and I chaired the subcommittee on, uh, on transportation, to put a provision in there to put the red line in front of, of the line if 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 the decision is made to uh to put that back into in, into reality it's going to take years though let me tell you we've lost a decade as a result of governor hogan's decision in regards to the red line in the meantime we've been working with east west bus issues with the mayor and with local officials and i think there will be resources put into east west uh, bus uh, transit issues and we are supporting that we've gotten some money out of the infrastructure bill already uh, to help the Baltimore transit issues. Uh, so we are looking at all viable options to deal with the trans transit public transit issues in the Baltimore region. There's a lot of, we have multimodal uh, 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 centers, hubs, uh, Penn Station is going to be a, a hub. We have a lot of things going on that we think are positive in regards to transit uh, in, in Baltimore. Uh, but make no mistake about it, uh, we're behind and we need to really increase our investment. So thank you for raising that. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, thank you for your representation and thank you to John Carden for his representation. I see he's on the line here also. He's here and he's going to ask you a question in a second. But I do want to say that uh, you are correct. And I'm glad that, that we that it's said out loud that the decision to put the red line back set us back a decade or a generation, perhaps, in having to restart that project. Um, and I'm glad that we're not giving up. But we do. But we uh, it did put us back to I don't know, square one, but one of the very early squares. And that was but let's keep at it. Baltimore does need that public transportation. Delia Cardin. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Senator, for always giving us plenty of time. And it's always a pleasure to be your delegate. So, um, so um, this is related to Delia Stein's question, but um, and I came in a few minutes late, so I hope you didn't already cover this. But in terms of transportation, there's also industrial transportation. We've had some issues with rail uh, in the Midwest um, and problems with trains. Um, I know that one that the Howard Street Tunnel is an issue that's that we're finally looking like we're kind of creating some some. I think the infrastructure bill has has some money in there to help work on that. But in terms of um, uh, uh, human safety and what the federal government is going to be doing in our region as we uh, improve our transportation, but um, I, I'm, I'm interested also in, you know, as Trade Point grows and we have more rail going to and through and and around the county and the city, um, is the federal government going to continue to make sure that our people are safe? Well, John, thanks for that question. Uh, we had a hearing yesterday in the Environment and Public Works Committee, committee I serve on, uh, with uh, Norfolk Southern and their CEO was present and we had the environmental people present. That affected us, by the way, just so you are aware. The Ohio River does not run through Maryland, but the watershed does run through our state. So our groundwater could very well be impacted by what happened uh, in the tragedy and accident in, in Ohio. So we are making sure that there is adequate monitoring, including coming into the to our watershed areas uh, in regards to hazardous materials. So it was a this was a totally preventable uh, situation. The uh, the uh, the safety rules were eased. 
Norfolk Southern did not make the adequate investments into their, their into their trains that they should have made. Uh, they're going to be held a, fully responsible for all the damage that was caused to the community, individuals, and to the environment. Uh, we're going to make sure that happens. But we have to move forward recognizing that we do have a lot of rail traffic that goes through Maryland, and we're impacted, as I said, even through rail safety outside of our state. So Yes, the Howard Street Tunnel is a major improvement for safety as, as well as commerce. It allows the double stack on, on our on our freight rail, which is extremely important for the competitiveness of the Baltimore Harbor. But it's also a safety issue. That tunnel, uh, there was a fire one time in the tunnels, we all remember. So it's important for us to, to update that facility that's over 100 years old. And the Frederick Douglass uh, Tunnel for the passenger rail, separating out the freight rail from the passenger rail and giving us a, a, a more uh, a straight tunnel situation, again, for safety uh, and efficiency. So we, we are dealing with that. We are going to change the safety rules. Make no mistake about it. We had bipartisan legislation that was introduced by the senators from Ohio. I'm optimistic that we're going to see some of those bills move forward. Uh, we are, just to underscore the irresponsible nature of Norfolk Southern, they had, I think, $10 billion in profits, and they didn't invest it in their trains. Instead, they did it with uh, stock buybacks. That's ridiculous. That's, that just shows the irresponsible aspects of the ownership. You do need reasonable government regulations on safety. We're going to increase those regulations um, and make sure that this type of a tragedy doesn't happen in the future. Uh, we have a lot of hazardous materials that work its way through Maryland. You need to know about it. We have to have total transparency. The communities need to know about it. Uh, we need to know uh, the risk factors and what are the plans in place in the event there is uh, an accident or spill. And uh, we're, we're going to up our game dramatically in this area as a result of the Norfolk Southern tragedy. Della Cardin, do you feel it, it got a good answer? No follow up there. Uh, well, you know, Senator, you, everybody knows what you're up to. So we only have a handful of questions for you today, which is great because mm -hmm. um, it means that we're all following. I do notice that, and I, and there's Scott Phillips. He always slides his hand at the end. I love this guy. Um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go to him. But I did notice that both of your constituents and, you know, your good, good responses, not only to the delegates, but to your constituents as well. <laughs> I get um, good. I get good service from my representatives. Yeah, well, I'm know, happy. That's both ways. Um, Delegate Phillips. So, good morning, Senator. How are you? Uh, doing well. Good. So, uh, on this area of transit, um, we talk about transit around the, the Washington metropolitan area, and it seems to me one of the reasons why transit seems to work. I knew clearly there was an investment, but uh, the Washington metropolitan area has their own authority. Um, there's been conversation about uh, an authority in the Baltimore uh, metropolitan area. I just wanted to get your thoughts, and I know that's something that would need federal support as well. Well, thanks for that question. The Washington region is somewhat unique. I must admit that it has a compact because you are dealing with actually four jurisdictions. That is Baltimore, uh, uh, Maryland, Virginia, the District of Columbia, and the federal government. So you really have four different partners in regards to the funding commitments in regards to WMATA. Uh, so I, I don't know if you can compare Washington to Baltimore, but, but clearly we have regional transportation authorities in our region that meet and talk, but there needs to be a, a fully coordinated effort. The state of Maryland takes the responsibility. So they're the entity that is uh, primarily responsible for the transit situations in the Baltimore region. They don't have to deal with the intergovernmental problems that we have in Washington. To some degree, it's easier. They can move quickly. They don't have to wait for other jurisdictions to pony up dollars. But Maryland has not been as aggressive in dealing with Baltimore as the regional authority in Washington has been in the nation's capital. So I, I, I think we just need to make it a higher priority. I'm not sure it's the legal structure that's preventing us from doing it, but we do need to give a higher priority to moving people in the Baltimore region. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, st I'm stuck in track of just about every morning come, trying to get out of Baltimore. It's, 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 a, it's a challenge. Uh, we, we have one of the, uh, the most challenged uh, transportation uh, uh, circumstances for commute in the country. And we have to recognize that and do something about it. Thank you. And thank you, Delegate Phillips. And again, Senator, thank you for being here. I'm going to give you the floor for some closing comments. 
And then uh, you can go to the all the, go take care of all those important things we asked you about today. Well, well, I wish you all good luck on your bills making it over to the other chamber by the deadline. I, I know you, so you, you have your, your your deadlines coming up this week. Uh, th thank you for what you're doing. You really are frontline, and uh, it's good to be your partner. I I tell you, we are very fortunate in Baltimore County to have the quality of, the, of our representatives in Annapolis and work very closely with Johnny Oshesky and the council. So uh, these are exciting times. These are challenging times. We know that uh, we, we sometimes get uh, get uh, challenged by our constituents, but it really is a, an honor to represent you in the Senate and, and know that we have an open door policy. So at any time, please get in touch with Jerome or me and recognize that Senator Van Hollen and I, particularly on appropriation issues, are going to be working as a team. So uh, any information you get to me, I'll get to Senator Van Hollen, and the reverse is also true. Well, so it's Baltimore, good to work with you. Anything we can do, let us know. Baltimore County is blessed to have leaders like you and our speaker, of course, in our own county, keeping an eye on us. So thank you all so very much. We brag about Adrian all the time. We're very <laughs> proud of what she does. It's, it's, yeah. uh, I, I, I think I think it's reflected in this group uh, for sure. So there you go. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so now we're going to move on to the business part of the meeting. We have no new bills to be heard today. We have two bills that have been on our docket uh, on and off for the past couple of weeks. And uh, we're going to move to them in numerical order. We're going to go to House Bill 381. The committee that was taking that bill up was the Education Subcommittee. I'm going to ask uh, Delegate Forbes, who is the chair of that subcommittee, to give us an update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I regret to report that the subcommittee is having trouble coming to a consensus on this bill. As you may recall, we were deferring to the statewide bill because there's a statewide bill in ways and means, but no action has been taken on that bill. Um, it is This bill is precedent setting, and that was giving our committee a pause um, but we also recognize the issue that families with kids in special education are facing. And so um, we have no recommendation at this time. Thank you. At this time, and I discussed this with you, um, if there is a member of that committee, since they were the ones who investigated it so thoroughly, that would like to weigh in on the difficulties or their considerations on this bill, this would include uh, Delegate Long, and Delegate Stein and Delegate Pastor, if any one of them would like to speak now, I'd like to give them a chance, a minute or two to weigh in if they'd like. They don't have to, but I thought since the committee itself didn't have a full report, maybe they would like to report as individuals on that subcommittee. I see I see Sorry. Delegate Pastor waving her hand at the camera, so I'm assuming that's what that is. Um, you don't have to put your hand up now since I've seen it. Um, Delegate Pastor. Okay, I'm sorry. My computer was getting ready to die. That, that hand worked. It was okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I just like to say that um, I believe that the system should have the burden of proof. That's what systems do. Um, but having been a part of it, I am very, very sure that what happens uh, is that the, the system as a whole of course, sends it to the department, uh, to central office, central office then will go in and take a look at what's going on in, this, in the school. So our witnesses were correct in terms of all of the things that were missing. Having been a principal and one very active in special education, I know that um, in Baltimore County, the, the thinking was moving towards holding principals first and foremost responsible if um, due process were called. And what we then were doing was being somewhat divisive, just dividing everyone, but putting it back on the system. Having spoken to, because this bill is so incredibly important and was important to me, I've lost many nights sleep over this bill. Um, I've also spoken to so many special educators, central office, uh, schools, and everyone pretty much behind the cameras say the same thing. I am conflicted and just would like to leave it with what is happening with the state bill simply because we have got to stop pushing the special ed can down the road. And 
we've got to make sure we're taking a look at what our needs are, if not as a state, then certainly as a county, because there are so many different corners that could raise its hand at any given moment to speak to the truth of what is happening in special education. Um, as a state, I think the state, super, I know the state superintendent knows that. So I'm thinking that what we need is a concerted effort to take a look at special education in the state and start processing. One, if you wanna look at, but I'll just stick with Baltimore County. Where is our money really going? Where, which children, who are the children that do end up getting um, special services outside of what the system can offer? We're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars <coughs> at them. And also um, understanding where we need to go school by school. This is too important. How we handle special education is a, a marker for how we educate all of our children. And so as much as I can appreciate the intent of this bill, and I truly do, I do believe that we must be concerted in our efforts to make sure that we are seeing a full picture. So when we say burden of proof, that becomes dubious in, in, in so many ways. I want us to, to do this so that we are serving our children righteously. Um, but... I, I hope that I've been somewhat clear because I'm very passionate about this, about this bill. But I, I don't think we're going to get what I, I think we would want out of it. It just goes back to kicking the can from central office to the schoolhouse. And, and then it goes back to, do we have the staffing? Are we putting the money in the right places? Um, and just to close up, I'll give you an example. There's one of our schools, and they have a self-contained science class with a teacher who is not certified as a teacher and definitely not certified to teach special ed. So we have homework to do, and we need to not just put our thumb over the hole in the dike, but to really get nitty gritty. So I hope I've made some sense in this because you know my heart um, and there's no need in putting ownership on any one place, especially a place where you know at the end of the day, it's gonna fall right back on the practitioner. And I'm hoping that with the state, and I have had conversations about the state one, and looking at language, the words burden of proof also from, and this is what I get from my special educator friends and um, partners that that in and of itself is scary. Maybe the, the, the terminology with that needs, that looks like finger pointing. And I know that didn't come from the county bill, that's how the state bill is named as well. And hopefully, There'll be some work on that. That's a long way around to get to a short distance. But you asked, Mr. Chair, and I gave you. I always know what I'm signing up for, Delegate Pastor. I always know what I'm signing up for. Um, I'm going, we have uh, a couple other members, and I'm just going to pause for a second. There's no requirement, but if you, and either or any of those uh, committee members would like to make a comment at this time. Seeing none. Now, I see some hands up. But actually, what I think we need to do now is take up the bill, then we can have discussion on it. And so this bill is, we have no committee report. So it is my opinion that what we need to do now is uh, take a motion on this bill and deal with it as a delegation. And I think it would be appropriate to uh, recognize the sponsor of the bill for a motion. So Delegate Guyton. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you very much to the subcommittee and to Delegate Pasteur in particular. We've had a lot of conversation about this bill, and I believe that she has actually lost more sleep over it than I have. So I appreciate that and uh, her deliberative attitude. Uh, 
about this issue. So I am actually not going to vote unfavorable for this no, bill, but I'm also no, not going to no, argue looking, that this so you, group. Wait a minute, Delegate Guyton, I was asking, not Delegate Guyton, I'm sorry, I was asking if you had a motion. That's I all. do not. Okay. I do not. I just want to say thank you. Okay, got it. I'm sorry. I didn't understand that. I wanted to, if we were going to get to a motion. So I'm going to then open up the floor to the entire delegation. If anyone would like to make a motion on this bill. Okay, I think I've waited an appropriate amount of time. It feels to me like at this time, the delegation is not interested in moving on this bill. And so we will pass this bill and we will not give it on to the the uh, the, com the uh, Ways and Means Committee for consideration unless there is some objection to that. If somebody else wants to step in at this point, I'm giving this every opportunity here. All right, that concludes our business then on House Bill 381. We will now move to House Bill 1171. This is the speed monitoring systems in residential districts bill. I'm going to go first to the subcommittee chair um, for a report. Delegate Cardin. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. We had um, a few um, very um, intense uh, meetings on this bill, um, and uh, we held the bill because um, the sponsor wanted to provide an amendment. We did. Uh, we did address the amendment in a another um, um, meeting yesterday, and we did not. We could not come up with a recommendation on the bill on the amendment or the bill as amended. So it's in the same posture as the previous bill, where the committee would not could not um, make a a recommendation. Um, and so I can go into the, at this point, I think I'm just leave it to you. And then I can go into some of the conversation about both the amendment and the bill, if you'd like. But I'll So leave in the possibility you. that we get a motion on this bill, um, and, and with the understanding that there has been an amendment offered, which has been somewhat, at least partially, I believe, crafted by the sponsor. Um, yes. Is that, is that correct? Okay. That is correct. The okay. Amendment so was... I think it would be, uh, if you could, as, as, the, as the committee chair, but also we'll let the, the, sure. manager of the amendment weigh in if there, we need more information, talk about the amendment, and then we'll throw it to, um, you, we, then we'll be able to one of three things. Absolutely. We, we can do what we just did and do nothing. Um, we So it's four, actually. We could move the amendment and then move the bills amended. We could just move the bill without amendment, and we could move against the bill. So there's a lot of things, but let's hear the amendment and then um, sure. we'll, we'll go forward. So for everybody, for, for people to remember, this is a bill that would um, uh, permit the county to be able to implement the speed camera program countywide and not by the, and not only adhere to the uh, specific requirements now to be within a half mile of a school, um, of a school system or a school. Um, the amendment, uh, basically said, unfortunately, I didn't, I think I left the amendments in my car. Um, the yeah. amendment said that the county may, the, 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 um, the county may not uh, install unless there is a uh, study done by the police. I believe it's the police and the traffic in conjunction with the traffic safety of the county um, that determined that it was necessary. I had suggested that they also determine the, le the, the length of, of the impact of a speed monitoring system as, a, as an addition to the amendment, but that we didn't, we didn't obviously didn't vote on that. So that it would be for impactful for a certain distance of, and I had recommended 800 yards um, however, it just said that there would be a, that there would be it would be determined through a traffic study of the necessity of it before it could be implemented, and that was what the amendment did. Okay, thank you, um, Delhi Guy. Did you want to expand on that amendment at all? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I do have it in front of me, so I appreciate it, and I appreciate the work of the subcommittee on this. Yeah, the amendment actually was brought to me by the members of District 8 and the member in District 44B, so thank you for that. Um, the amendment says that a speed monitoring system may not be placed or used in Baltimore County unless the Baltimore County Police Department determines that the speed monitoring system is necessary based on a traffic safety analysis for the proposed location conducted in conjunction with the Baltimore County Department of Public Works 
and the placement and use of the speed monitoring system is approved by the Baltimore County Council after notice and opportunity for public input. So that's that's the that's amendment. Fun. So I see a lot of comments coming, but we need to get some action here first. All right. Can I move the um Yes, ma'am. I was going to offer you the chance to move the amendment on the bill at this time. Second. We're considering it. So I've got a motion on that amendment and a second on that amendment. Now we're open for discussion. Delegate Ruth, did you also want to discuss or were you just up there to second or move the amendment? I, I would like to discuss, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Go forward. That, thank you so much. And and I had um, some concerns about this bill, um, but with the amendments, uh, my concerns have been addressed and I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Um, in particular, my request was the public input part of it. And so so I, I want to thank the sponsor for being open to amendments. I want to thank the subcommittee for all your work on this. And I want to remind people that we can discuss the bill as amended, but really we're discussing the amendment right now. Delegate Shalega. Um, thank you. This seems like a completely different bill. So can you uh, please walk through it one more time? Sure. Okay. So who, who are you requesting them? Um, Whoever, uh, I guess, delegate Guyton since well, it's her amendment. Yeah, we'll start with the committee chair if he has anything he wants to add uh, as far as that goes. And then we'll, if, we'll, let, the, uh, we'll let the sponsor uh, put the icing on the cake. So to speak. Well, I mean, so, I mean, and I think Delegate Guyton will correct me if uh, if if my understanding is is incorrect. But um, they, what the bill does, it it doesn't change the bill the bill very much. All it does is say that you can't implement it. Does it, the bill will then allow you to implement the speed camera program anywhere in the state, but only after a study is done on a particular location that provides the a demonstration that it is necessary at the location mm -hmm. and the county council approves it. I think they have to, the based on the amendment, they have to approve it for each location that is being requested. It's not just a, um, it's not just that the, that the county council has to approve the idea and then in the traffic study has to show it. I think they, I think based on the amendment, that they have to actually approve it for each location. I could be wrong about that part. Oh, um, I think accuracy on that? I saw you shaking your head yes. Oh, so. Thank you, yes. Actually, uh, Delia Carden is exactly right. This actually doesn't change much about the process that the county already would have in place. Um, what it does is codify that there are some guardrails and um, I do recognize that you, Delegate Zaliga, and some other colleagues have um, had concerns in petitions and other posts and uh, okay. radio radio Sorry, shows bit, about, yes, right about, and this addresses those concerns because what I heard was that they could put them anywhere and charge anything. This amendment hopefully addresses those concerns for you. Okay. Well, it actually does completely change the bill because the first bill was, yes, exactly that. The county, we, we totally have abdicated our authority to um, have a say on speed cameras in your original bill. So, so this new so bill amendment, creates yeah. a brand new process. So it, it actually is a different bill. And so my questions would be multiple fold. Number one, I'd like to see it in writing because I don't think we should vote on anything till we see it in writing. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'd like a fiscal note on it because the traffic study isn't cheap. And number three, I'd like to see the councilmen that you're empowering with this, like to know their position as well as the county executive. So, you know, this is kind of like strike the bill and replace it with another because mm -hmm. it, it really, while they're both fruit, the substance of them are different. So mm -hmm. I would request that, you know, we, we cross all those hurdles before you ask us to vote on it. Delia Guyton. I'd like to move favorable on the amendment, as I already have. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have, we've got that. Okay. <laughs> I've done that already. I'm sorry. I will point out so that the bill, the bill does not mandate uh, that they do these studies only if there's if they feel like they want to they want to place one. So oh, that's this, even worse. So okay, so um, okay. Mr. Chair, are you asking us to vote on something that we haven't seen in writing? Um, apparently, that's po the, the bill it has been made. Um, Delegate Cardin, do you have that amendment? Uh, I will. I will I'm going to work right now on getting a copy Delegate of it. Guyton, do you have the amendment? Justin also has the amendment. Yeah. Okay. Well, all our county Justin, delegation. Justin's going to mail it around and we'll put it up on the screen in just a second. Okay. Let's have some discussion, but he's going to, yeah, he's we, going to make sure it gets mailed about. 
and then it gets up on the screen. Okay. Yeah, this seems like kind of like um vote well, on it. Yeah, we're not yeah, it. we're not we're not gonna get into what it seems like. We're we're working on the amendment. Delegate okay, well that it more than seems like it actually is saying yeah. that. Thank you, Delegate Schlega. Okay, so here's the amendment. Um, we can scroll to where you want us to. I'd, I'd ask Justin to scroll down a little to the part that's the uh, new that that is the the, the uh, emboldened language, so you can see what it says. Is there more to it than that? Yes, one more. Too bad it's on two pages, but we'll do the best we can. Go ahead and go back up to the to the first part, so everybody can get a, a peek at it and look at it. And while we're doing that, Delegate Rocky, would you like to weigh in, please? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I, I want to thank uh, our subcommittee chair, uh, Delegate Cardin. I, I think he's done a, a great job trying to work through all this. We've had several meetings about this bill, and I, uh, Delegate Cardin, I really appreciate that. Um, I, I would say that I did have an opportunity to speak to several uh, Baltimore County Council members last night um, uh, about this potential amendment language, and the county councilmen still have uh, serious reservations. This is bipartisan council members I spoke to last night about this bill. I do think it's interesting that the county council, um, as far as I'm aware, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, or the county executive have not weighed in about this bill. That That's usually telling when they don't offer some sort of opinion one way or the other um, about a bill. And I, I think we should all consider that strongly that, that they haven't said anything about it. And all the conversations that I've had with county council members um, have been we're not we're not seeking this out. So I I, I still have strong reservations even with this uh, amendment here, based upon my conversations with uh, members of our county council. Okay, thank you. Um, we're off screen because Justin can only, his computer can only either mail this amendment to everybody right now and then put it back up on the screen. So right now the amendment is coming to everyone's mailbox if you'd like to see it, and then we will display it again as soon as he's done with that task so that we can address it. Um, uh, subcommittee chair, uh, delegate yeah, card. Yeah, just uh, not a subcommittee chair, just as a as a as a okay delegate, delegate. card member um, of the Baltimore County delegation. The, the, the I I support this. By the way, I support this amendment. Um, I will vote for it. Let me just say that I am not sure whether, but it doesn't bother me. But I'm not sure whether this would actually impact the present um, speed camera program and require. Um, the study to be done for speed cameras to be in front of schools. I, I don't know whether it does or doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I happen to support the amendment. The bill as a whole, I, we can talk about at a later time, but this amendment I think is a good amendment. Oops, sorry. Okay, I'm still on. Um, Delegate Ruth, on the amendment. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on the amendment, I, I just wanted to point out that Baltimore County does already have a process for traffic studies, which they do um, before they can implement any speed bumps or any kind of um, you know traffic calming measures. And they actually did one on, on my street, um, but uh, did not reveal enough need for, for those type of measures. Um, but so it's not like we're asking them to develop a whole new process. They actually have a process and it seems like it could be very easy to add speed cameras as one potential measure into that process. Thank you, Delegate Ruth. Delegate Grammer on the amendment. Amendment, did the subcommittee vote on this amendment? No. Okay. So the subcommittee is, is, is offering, it was offered the amendment, but didn't move on it. And so we have a motion in front of us right now in delegation. Number two, <laughs> number two on the amendment. So um, is, the, is the notice provisions in under number two on the amendment are they defined elsewhere in in the in the relevant code this is not a question for me to answer it's either for the committee or for the um or for the sponsor i mean do we have do we have any kind of 60 day 30 day so if you the process for speed bumps they're kind of what they're doing there is they're weighing traffic throughput and they're using that to see what budget they have in the county budget. And that's how they appropriate those funds. So it's a little bit different for, do we need a speed camera here? I mean, do we have the bounds of the public input that the county's gonna have to implement before they put a speed camera so in? It, it just in, in my uh, conversations with the county, what I, what I gleaned was that this is not a budget issue. Um, this is a question of, you know, whether there's an, uh, an interest in putting speed cameras and then figuring out the whether that whether it's a um, zero sum game where they take it from one place and put it to another 
or they have to then uh, work on budget for the following year to implement additional speed cameras. Ms. Ayo, are, are you are you online? There's some debate about uh, the county's participation or what they would have to do for this. Maybe you can weigh in for us. Um, good morning, uh, Ms. Mr. Chairman. Can you all hear me? Yes, and we thank you for being here. Uh, thank you. Um, I have not had an opportunity to take a look at this amendment. This is the, the first that I'm seeing. And so I cannot say that I have any expertise on speed cameras and what this might require. Um, the, the county uh, executive chose not to weigh in on this bill um, simply because what we have learned is that um, we currently do not have enough speed cameras for the school zone where we can currently place them. And we feel like we need to um, we need to address that challenge, um, you know, before perhaps we consider um, how and where to expand them. Um, we certainly would if this bill passes, um, but but I have not been able to analyze this, um, this amendment or talk with our police department about it. Okay. So so, for example, in Essex. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, Delegate Grammer, would uh, I, go ahead, since it was originally your comment that brought yeah, uh, the county. Very, in. very briefly. Well, I have some streets, for example, in my community association in Essex, where they have concerns of speeding, but they would definitely not want a camera on a residential street. Okay, and, so that's Delegate Grammer. That, that, that's on the bill. Okay, that's yeah, on whether we're going to have the camera. This is about whether the county would, would vet this or not. Yeah, that's on the community input provision. I Can anybody okay. answer me what the, what, how, how, how much they would be given? How much would people of Essex or Dundalk be given to provide input here? Can, can anybody speak to that? Well, let's let, let's, let this, let's let the maker of the amendment speak to that. Delegate Guyton. Thank you. Yes, I can. So because this has to be voted on by the county council in this bill, it would go through the same process and any other bill before the county council would um, would go through, which would include public comment um, that they already have in place. So that does not change those provisions and uh, nor does this actually change or require that they have new cameras. Um, all it does is put the control into the Baltimore County Council instead of having them bring it to the state every year to be decided upon by us. But that's not a public input as you would tip historically be provided. If something goes in a community, typically there's a couple months where people, they could mail and they're typically provided like a meeting which they could come in and say, here's what we're thinking about placing this. And there's a little bit of a forum. If it's just a typical county council voting session, I, I don't even know if this even exists. Any any additional form of input exists, but I'm I'm going to yield my time. Thank okay, you. thank you, thank you for your comments, uh, Delegate McCaskill. I'm sorry, I have no idea where we are right now. Um, good morning, everyone. Let me take a step back for a minute. We're on the amendment. We are we are considering. There's a motion and a second on adding this amendment to the bill that we are considering voting on. Okay, and and so we're in discussion, or are we just gonna, since we already seconded, we- Ultimately, we will take a vote on this amendment, yes. Okay, after discussion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I, I just had to catch up for a second. No worries, I just, thank you. I, I, I am one of the people who was on um, the co-committee that our chairman decided to uh, and create <laughs> for this. Um, and so on the amendment for the second, uh, on the second sheet or under the second um, comment, the placement and use of the speed monitoring system is approved by the Baltimore County Council after notice and an opportunity for public input are provided. My concern goes back to disparity. Um, so in talking to of course, our Senator Charles Sitnor, um, in reference to his bill and the contradiction that this comes, that this brings, um, caused me to um, vote a no on it. And because we're back at disparity, we have to take into account um, the practice of getting folks to um, county council on an ordinary um, to 
weigh in on certain issues, right? And so for my community, there'll be more than likely times where they won't have or have notice or opportunity to get to Baltimore County Council to weigh in on this. And so I'm concerned about um, the, the second part of the amendment. And so that's one of the reasons why I would not be, um, I'm, I'm not in favor of the amendment. Um, so I just wanted to give my two cents on that. Um, Thank you, Delegate. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you have more? Okay, so Delegate Stein, on the amendment. On the amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman, I support the amendment. Um, I, you know, I, I imagine that any county council approval would be large of, of, of placing a speed camera in a particular location would be largely dependent on that council representative's request and approval of doing it. I, you know, I guess anything's possible, but I think it would be um, quite unlikely that a speed camera would be authorized um, by the full council without the local council rep's authorization. And and presumably just like in CZMP or other, um, other situations where there's great local deference to the county council rep that, uh, you know, that would happen in this case as well. Um, and um, I, I have comments about the, the benefits of speed cameras overall, but um, that's the debate on the bill as, as amended if this amend amendment gets approved. But I urge support for this amendment. Thank you, Delegate. Uh, Delegate Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over what is the current process. So when a a county requests that uh, they would like a speed camera, it comes to the Maryland General Assembly, specifically the ENT committee on the House side. Is that correct, uh, Vice Chair Stein? Well, it's it's um, delicate the the process right right now. Um, under current law, the legislature has author has given authority to counties to place speed cameras as it would like in school zones. So the, uh, the county doesn't have to come back for specific authorization by the legislature for placing cameras in speed zones. But for broader authority beyond speed zones, uh, the, the delegation, the, the jurisdiction does need to request authorization from from the legislature. That's what Montgomery County did at, back more than 20 years ago. That's what Prince George's County did uh, more recently within the past couple of years. So, um, you know, so Baltimore County would be following um, the process that Prince George's County and Montgomery County followed in requesting broader authorization to use uh, speed cameras, but still was subject to the limitations, the general limitations for speed cameras. Again, can't be on a road where the speed limit is more than 35 miles an hour. There have to be warnings um, posted in advance. Um, there, uh, there are limitations as to how the speed camera revenue can be spent, things like that. So I hope that that's responsive to your question. Sure, sure. And, and when it comes to the committee, um, who, is uh, making who is taking the votes on those bills? Are, are is it only members from Baltimore County? No, in the ENT committee, it would be the full committee. But this is an issue in which th there would be local deference. So, if the Baltimore County delegation uh, requests this bill, then it is quite likely that it would be approved by the full committee. Okay, and and has there's been has there been instances where You've heard from community members in reference to these camera bills in the ENT committee. Uh, you mean from uh, like from other jurisdictions like Prince George's County, Montgomery from, County, et cetera? Well, have, have, commun have communities in which these cameras would affect? Um, have any have you heard testimony from any of those uh, members? Only um, in in support. I mean, for example, there is a bill uh, requested by the Prince George's County delegation to increase the number of speed cameras authorized along Route 210, which is a state road 
Um, and, you know, we've heard from uh, community groups, you know, supporting that authorization. Um, and I think similarly, when Prince George's County requested, you know, through a local delegation bill a few years ago, authorization, broader authorization, authorization along county roads, we heard from community groups in support of that. Okay. And that's good for clarification of the procedure. We're a little off the amendment here, but it does talk about how we decide where we put them. Um, and thank you, Delegate Stein. We're lucky to have your expertise on board here. Uh, Delegate Naraki. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Sorry, let me just lower my hand there. Um, thank you. Uh, just um, two things. Um, Delegate McCaskill uh, brought up a point that uh, we, we had talked about a little bit at, at our subcommittee, and I'd like to kind of expound upon. I am also deeply concerned with that public input provision there. I don't think that there are proper guardrails on there. I can only speak for, for my district. It seems in my district that the communities that, that have the most speed cameras placed in them are also our most underrepresented uh, poor and minority communities uh, because they often have access issues to get to the county council during the daytime. Um, these meetings are, are a time, the, the work sessions are during the daytime when the real business is made on these um, and, and folks have trouble getting off of work and all this kind of thing. So I, I'm very concerned with the ability, uh, particularly of our underserved communities to actually provide adequate public input uh, to this. I also think it's very instructive. We just heard from the county executive's office um, saying that they're not ready to, to implement this program. Um, I, I, I think the county executive is doing a great job and I take him at his word. And if he says, hey, this is going to be something that's going to be hard for us to implement, I think we should listen to that as well. Um, so that's that's all that I have to add. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Delegate Schlega. Um, Thank you. Can you go back up to the top part of the amendment? Thank you so much. So I'd just like to um, point out on the amendment here that um, a speed uh, monitoring system may not be placed unless, so there's an, still the issue of unlimited speed cameras because now it's not like um, Delegate Stein talked about a specific road in Prince George's County. This is any road. You took out the speed limit. So any road and the Baltimore County Police Department determines the speed monitoring system is necessary. So, so we're taking any road that the police department says is necessary based on a traffic study analysis. We don't know who's going to do it. The county said they can't, they don't have the funds to do it um, for a proposed location. Um, so, you know, again, I would say this is completely changing the bill before it was any road under 35 miles an hour. Now we're saying any road in the entire county that the police department determine that they need a speed monitoring system. Someone is going to do a traffic study. We don't know who can afford it or do it because that's not determined. And then um, if you go to the second page, Again, we're, we're talking about a public input meeting without any real guidelines. Um, there is also in this bill, no limitations on how the money will be spent. So in other cases, when you know, these are $40 tickets that you know, will just could go anywhere in the entire county. I mean, the county, I think collected 6 million last year in speed camera tickets. Um, so if we're going to increase it substantially, does this delegation want to direct the money? Um, I, I would just say, you know, this is a, a completely different bill than what was originally brought in. And, um, you know, I, if we're going to trust the subcommittee process, it, the subcommittee didn't really even look at it as well. So um, for those reasons, and many others, I'm going to be against this amendment. Thank you for weighing in. Um, we are having the council look at uh, something that was said that this would remove the 35 mile hour limit. I don't believe this amendment does, but we are asking uh, the Baltimore County Council, the our, 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 our local DLS council, if that's true or not. And uh, she doesn't have a microphone working, so we're waiting for a response for her on that. Uh, Delegate uh, Phillips. Delegate, and before Delegate Phillips go in, because on. he was on it as well, I just want to make sure. Wait a minute, uh, Delegate McCaskill, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, are, what are, you, are you responding to something someone said? Um, yeah, kind of just going really quickly that um, 
Delegate Shalega mentioned that we didn't. Yeah, Dele Delegate get McCaskill, in, in, fa in fairness to the other delegates, um, you can respond to that, but we're going to go in, in order that people have uh, asked to speak. And I'm going to go to Delegate Phillips next. Sorry. I apologize. That's all right. Not at all. Good morning, everyone, again. <clears throat> okay. I was on the subcommittee, and I do think we deliberated um, and based on our inability to come to a recommendation. I think had it been placed to a vote, the subcommittee would have voted um, the amendment down. So I wanna be clear on where the subcommittee came out. I think the chair was very kind um, in saying we couldn't come to resolution. The, there are a number of concerns that I have. Um, practically speaking, and I have had the opportunity to talk to to uh, Baltimore County Council representatives. Practically speaking, the way the cameras are working today is they get moved around and they get moved around for a reason. Because in essence, what happens is it's a temporary um, impact. Once people know where the cameras are located after a period of about 30 days, they slow down. The cameras then get moved to another location for a couple of reasons. One is because they're no longer generating revenue. Um, and the other is because their effect has taken place, but it's temporary. The county does not have sufficient equipment to really change behavior in the long term, because you'd have to bounce those machines around to the various locations quite frequently. And it just don't aren't interested and don't have the ability to do that today. So it's a practical application of this. Um, I know Senator Stein talked about the other jurisdictions, Prince George's and Montgomery County. I don't know this as a fact, but I would think that the councils would have um, come forward to ask for that as opposed to the delegation just simply deciding it on its own. Um, because this is such a local issue, in my mind, we should be looking to the county council to ask us to do something like this and they haven't done that. I'm also concerned about when Delegate uh, McCaskill talked about uh, um, disparate treatment and discrepancies and in, in, uh, um, impact. One of the things that I know is when it comes to traffic related um, uh, uh, challenges, right? car titles, registration, et cetera. In the African-American community, there is a higher likelihood that those things won't get paid and things like tickets for uh, speed cameras begin to pile up and it's potential to cause people to be stopped, to lose their, their, their um, ability to drive, et cetera. And unfortunately, it's just real. That's a, it's a disparate impact on that. Um, in, in my conversation with my councilman, basically, I did not hear any support uh, for, for this bill. So for those reasons, um, I will be unfavorable on the amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Delegate Stein, another bite at the apple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to clarify that I believe that this amendment um, st still makes the bill consistent with all the other protections under our speed camera law for the state. I mean, the state back about 10 years ago authorized speed cameras uh, you know, for, uh, for school zones, state highway work zones, and over the years we've you know, we expanded that authorization for a couple counties, but still the basic protections um, are, are there. And I don't believe that the amendments take the bill outside of those protections. Thank you. And thank you. Um, Delegate Metzger. Yes, thank you. And I've been really intense on this. I appreciate what's been said, uh, particularly uh, Delegate Phillips, his comments, because I am living in a district that has um, several lower income areas. 
and just those things. And what I also had in mind when Delegate Salega was talking, since the bill is really changed completely and there's no physical note, I think it would be in particular this year, since we're saying there's no money and if we don't have any money, Baltimore County surely doesn't have any money. I think it's not ready for prime time. And I think it would take time to put something like this together in a more applicable way that where it works. So I would just, um, well, I don't want to be the one to say this, but I think we need to just take a hold on this. Yeah, but we're on the amendment right now. Right. Um, I'm against the amendment. Okay, I, um, uh, Delegate Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be very quick. Um, I actually was, my comments were similar to Delegate Stein's, but um, I just wanted to uh, address um, Delegate Chalega's comments that this does not change the other parts of the bill. The speed limit is still intact. Thank you. Yes, we, we established that. I think I said that. Uh, we got we got counsel to weigh in. She, her mic's not working, but we texted her real quick and asked her that question to find out. Um, all right, uh, Delegate McCaskill, I, I, I called you down earlier and I want to make sure you had a chance to weigh in. I can play the Jeopardy. Okay. There she, there she <laughs> okay. is. I apologize. My phone is on charger. My cord is short and I can't. Um, but everyone has said exactly what I was going to say. Thank okay. you, delegation. <laughs> OK, we're all a little short cord right now. Um, uh, Delegate Pastor. Okay, having just, thank you, just having seen um, the amendment, uh, I think the amendment is fair. However, um, I think I'm like, whatever I've heard, because if the county council doesn't want to vote for it, then they won't, then there won't be a camera. Mm -hmm. And if the people in the community don't want it, then there won't be a camera. So it has, the amendment has all of the accoutrements, I think, that are about inclusiveness. However, I'm also leaning towards not understanding, but we're only looking at the amendment. So right now, just, right so now we're considering the amendment. Right, just the amendment. Whether it fits into the total bill, Right. As a whole, we no could, story. We could I might, the I go down. Go the bill. Okay, I'm mm, okay. Sorry, but it's on the amendment right now. That Thank you. All right, uh, Delegate Jackson. Uh, move the previous question. Okay, so the previous question has been moved, which means that would move us to a vote. Um, we might have to vote on the previous question. I hope not. I hope a lot of opinions have been expressed. I think everybody has a feeling for where they stand on this one. Uh, without objection, uh, I, the previous question has been moved. Uh, with, uh, I'm going to take it as a motion unless I hear an objection for us to, to do a roll call on that. I see none. So the previous question has been moved, which means we move to a vote on the amendment. Now, I want to point out that in voting on amendments, we need only a majority of the members who are voting or are present. When we get to the bill, we will need a constitutional majority on either a favorable or unfavorable, which in the case of us having 20 people means having 11 votes for whatever motion is placed. But at this point, we're voting on the amendment and we need a simple majority of the members present. And so here we go. We're going to start off. The motion is on the amendment and we're moving favorable on adding the amendment to the bill. Vice Chair Jackson. Aye. Uh, Delegate Allen. Yes. Delegate Bendari. I think Delegate Madari is excused. Delegate Cardin. Yes, on the amendment. Delegate Forbes. Sorry, Mr. Chair, yes on the amendment. Delegate Grammer. You count? No. No on the amendment. Delegate Guyton. Yes. Delegate uh, <laughs> Speaker Jones. Yes. Yeah. Yes on the yeah. amendment. Delegate Long. Delegate Long on the amendment. Okay, no vote. Delegate Mangione. No. Delegate McCaskill. No. Delegate Metzger. No. Delegate Naraki. No. Delegate Pasteur. Yes. Delegate Phillips. Sorry, no. 
Delegate Ruth. Yes. Delegate Stein. Yes. Delegate Shalega. No. And Delegate White. Yes. I have a count. I'm going to go to the uh, secretary. Madam Secretary, what do you have as the count on the vote for the for the amendment? Uh, because Bandari was excused and you didn't vote. We have 10 people. Yes. And, uh, yes. And that's that's a majority. There are 17 members voting. So that represents a majority of the members voting on the amendment. And so the amendment is now being is being attached to the bill. So now we have a bill with an amendment. Um, I will turn, of course to the sponsor of the bill for a motion if she so chooses on this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. I move the bill favorable. Delegate Long, I'm sorry. We tried to get you. Did you have a vote on the last one? On the yes, amendment? I said I kept hollering no. So well, you were hollering into a mic that wasn't turned on, but we have you as a no. That does not change the outcome of the vote. The amendment is still attached. I understand. I just want to be on the record. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. We have you as a no. Okay. okay. So, Delegate Guyton, did I hear you? Did I hear you? I, I recognize you, but uh, Delegate Long uh, got his vote in there. So, would you repeat your motion, please? I move favorable on the bill. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and it's properly seconded. I didn't see because we've got the thing up. I don't have everybody on screen, but I did hear a second and we're going to assume it was one of you. Um, And so now now I will open up the floor to debate on the bill as amended. Delegate Cardin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I guess we can take down the amendment if you want to, but you can leave it up if you want. Yeah, um, we had we yeah, had a yeah. very long and arduous and very good discussion about this bill in subcommittee um, with, um, we saw a lot of the um, positive reasons and the, and, the, and the positive aspects of doing this in subcommittee. Um, many of them were, were well stated. Um, this could in fact um, help community associations make roads safer. Um, it, a lot of the, the, the letter, the, the letters of support and a lot of the communications to us came from Different community groups that are asking to be able to be um, to be able to have speed cameras in front of their residential areas so that they can have um, uh, roads where people go slower. That's the essence of the bill. Here's my concern and why I have issues with this bill, with all due respect to the sponsor and with the understanding that we're trying to make our county a better place. We only have limited resources. We only have a certain number of speed cameras. There is no indication, and I I did have some conversations with the county executive um, about this and asked him, is there there a possibility that we are going to be increasing budget for more speed cameras? He was not willing to give me any answer whatsoever. Um, I took from that that this is going to be a -a whack-a-mole. We're going to have the ability to take speed cameras from one place and move them to another. And it's going to be the, the question is going to be, which community groups have the most, whether it be political influence or people that are contacting uh, their county council people to encourage them to move a speed camera from a school to their community groups? Might that be a good thing? It might be. It might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. I don't, I'm not judging that. I'm just saying this is what I think is going to wind up happening. And my concern is that we also we have legislation in, which I'm assuming somebody's going to mention, to try and confine speed cameras to closer to school zones because one of the things that came out in the hearing that everybody remembers is that it shows that the speed camera is effective essentially for 400 feet in front of the speed camera and 400 feet behind the speed camera. And when, when that picture was shown about where the slowing down happens or where the violations happen, they all happen right in front of the speed cameras because people know to slow down right in front of the speed camera. So the entire road is not going to get slowed down. It's going to be just in front of where the camera is, which is great, which works. But I think that is the most effective in front of a school uh, where you have crosswalks and you have a lot of children and you have the possibility of more fatal accidents with young people, which is why I think that um, the county should complete out and fill out its entire school zone project before we expand it, even though we all want, me included, by the way, I used to live right on Garrison Forest Road. It was a 30 mile an hour speed limit. 
I wanted a speed camera right in front of my house because people were going 80 miles an hour down that straightaway, those of you who know where I live. Um, and I wanted it there, but would I say we should move it from in front of the JCC or Garrison Forest School to put it in front of my house so that my kids can be safe? I don't know, that's a, that's a judgment call that we can all make right now. In my opinion, with the budgetary situation it is, as it is, and I believe um, while this is laudable and what we're trying to accomplish, I think it's going to, um, and the county not having weighed in to say, yes, do this, what's gonna happen is we're gonna move, we're, we're gonna create policy, which is basically gonna move constituent encouragement into the county council and the county executive to do something that I'm not sure they really have the resources to be able to do. So I just think that the policy is not quite there yet. While I do believe that if we had unlimited resources, it would be fabulous to do and to give them the authority to do it. Thank you, so, Delegate Martin. I'm going to point out to the delegation that we're at 1020 and it would be nice for us to be able to resolve a vote on this bill. So if you're making comments, we have no policy about timing uh, de delegates when they talk. But if you could try to keep your, your comments on point and as brief as possible, I would certainly appreciate that. Delegate Mangione. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for this discussion because uh, you know, I, was, I absolutely learned a lot about this. And just from this discussion today, it kind of seems as if, if I can understand this correctly, there's no fiscal note to this bill, really. So there's no idea what it's going to cost. Um, there's no support really from the county executive or the county council. I don't want to be repetitive, but these are the two main factors that this delegation almost always considers. Uh, another big one I learned that is affects the minority communities the most. The subcommittee, as I understand, did not even vote on that previous amendment, nor did, if I'm not mistaken, this, did the subcommittee vote on the bill itself? And what was that vote? No. And there's no the, subcommittee. The report is the subcommittee all. took it up, but did not get to a vote on it or if they did they were they were tied i can't remember which but they were unable to arrive at a decision on on this bill or the amendment okay yeah so well, thank why, you. that's why it has fallen to us to have the discussion here yeah i mean those are all things that usually go into consideration when we vote yes or no on a bill and overwhelming uh negatives there which if we consider that for any other bill i would assume that we would probably vote no if that was the uh true for that. So that's why I'm going to um, vote no on the bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Delegate Grammer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to try and limit this to one minute. So I've learned from transportation policy that the purpose of a speed limit is not actually to limit speed. It's to limit the variance between slowest and fastest drivers. The purpose of speed cameras is a revenue generator. If you want to control the speed of traffic, you do things with the structure of the road. You narrow the road, you put in an island, a roundabout, or where you can't do that, you put in a speed bump. And that's why communities always go after speed bumps. So, you know, I, I, I think that the problem is here is that my community, that we have issues with speed, they hate the idea of putting cameras in communities because it just begins to feel like a police state. So I think if, if we did anything, what we should do is limit the, the applicability of these funds to projects that in your district that can change the structure of your road, islands, uh, speed bumps, roundabouts. That's how we decrease speed. I, I, I just have a lot of luck, you know, putting more cameras in residential spaces where people feel like they're perpetual. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Grammer, Delegate Guyton. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify the bill on the bill. Right? There is no fiscal note on this bill because we are not expanding speed cameras with this bill. Right? All this bill does is take the responsibility from the state to decide where these cameras might be most useful in Baltimore County public safety decisions and give it to the people who are closest to the neighborhoods, which is the county council and the county. So, um, I think there's a lot of confusion about whether people approve of speed cameras or don't approve of speed cameras. That is not this bill. All this bill says is that, and I'll, I am on the transportation subcommittee of, of ENT at this point, and I am hearing bills from other counties where they're coming to ask our, group of, our small group of people, many of whom have never seen these roads, to determine whether or not they can allow a speed enforcement device on a certain road. I feel like 
I'm going to, I'm going to fall on the side of small government and local control here and say, I am not in the best position to make that decision about Wacomico County or Worcester County and Baltimore City or Anne Arundel County is not in the best decision, to make, best place to make those decisions about Baltimore County. All this bill does is allow the Baltimore County government to make the decisions where it's, whether it's expansion or moving or restricting instead of the state. That's all the bill does. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Guyton. Delegate Pastor. Okay, very quickly, uh, Delegate Mangion uh, just outlined all of my thinking, and he even included the disparity among the poor or the disenfranchised, either by, um, I'll just say, by communities. Uh, and it's out there that when you start with a limited number, as Delegate Cardin said, it becomes pick and choose who can speak the loudest, who has the most. Um, clout. Um, and so in terms of the whole thing, I would certainly like to see more thought in the, in the committee, subcommittee, et cetera. So that's it. Do something with it. Thank you so much. Delegate Ruth. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I, I want to, this is a really difficult issue and, and I want to thank everybody for the, the conversation. And I have learned a lot from this conversation. Um, and, you know, I have concerns about speed cameras generally. Um, I agree with Delegate Grammer that a, a better solution is, is, you know, to design our roads in, in ways that keep people safe. Um, and, you know, I also have concerns about disparities as, as has been discussed. Um, however, um, I feel like the amendment provides appropriate guardrails. And um, I have had uh, emails from constituents and from community associations in my district asking for this authority um, to be given to the county. And I, I will also note on um, the, the topic of disparities that, that um, the emails I've received have generally been from communities of color in my district. Um, and so I feel like I have to lean a little bit towards my constituents. So I will be voting to support this bill. Um, and, and I do also think that it's not gonna have a major impact because of the, the guardrails and because of the, the budgetary concerns. But I do think that the county should have the authority if there is a particular trouble area that, that needs to be addressed, the county shouldn't have to wait until January and bring it to the, bring it to us to, to decide on each individual one. So thank you so much. Thank you, Delegate Ruth. Delegate Naraki. M Mr. Chair, uh, just um, two things. Uh, the first is maybe a question for either you or for, or for um, Chairman Cardin. Um, my, my question is, the amendment we just voted on had a, a requirement for a speed study in there, correct? We're putting the, we're putting it back up. You do have it in your mail as well. Yeah. Yes. I just for, as a point of of clarification. Okay. There. So yeah, we'll scroll down so you can see it there. Yes. So and that um, is now that is now part of what we're considering. We have sure. added this amendment. Sure. So so that obviously would have a fiscal uh, impact attached. To that right? I understand. No. No, it would not because well, it's only if in fact they decide to try and get one placed, they have the authority to try to get a traffic study done to do it, yes. And is there a, so they, their system, they already have traffic study systems set up. So would there be an impact? Probably not. Well, respectfully, Mr. Chair, I think that speed studies call something, right? So there, there is some sort of dollar expenditure that would occur there to, to so study. This is less of a question and more that you feel that that would be true, correct? I feel, I, I feel that, that, there is a fis that, that there is a fiscal impact here, and I would like to see what a fiscal note is on this bill. Okay. Um, but that, uh, that's the, that, that was my first point. My, my second point is um, uh, to, the, to the someone discussed earlier about the process of putting in speed uh, humps and speed bumps. I've just gone through this process right by my home. Um, I'm still deeply concerned about the impact uh, of equity with respect to even that process. Uh, near my home, uh, a business person was able to get something put in a bunch of speed humps that the community was un almost universally opposed to, but because they were able to push it through, um, we have a minority community that had basically no voice in that process. Uh, and so that that's, again, I have serious concerns to, to Delegate Pastor's point about issues of equity with how these things are placed uh, in, in minority communities in particular. 
Okay, thank you. Delegate Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, when this issue of broadening the county's authority to deploy speed cameras came up a few months ago, I was really on the fence because I'm not loud about the idea of, of adding automated cameras um, more than we already have. However, for the past few months, I've gotten at least half a dozen uh, requests from different communities from, from my, throughout my district saying that speeding, especially during the COVID era, has gotten worse. We see it on our highways, we see it on our county roads. And so, you know, that feedback from, from constituents, from communities convinced me th that this is something that we, that we should authorize. And I do know that Montgomery County, which has had speed cameras uh, with a type of authority that Baltimore County is seeking for about 20 years, they were very happy with it. They believe it has had a direct impact in slowing drivers down and saving lives. I know that you know Baltimore City just added some cameras on the JFX, and they already are saying, documenting that it is slowing drivers down and presumably saving lives, reducing accidents. Um, so, you know, I think this is again that we're authorizing Baltimore County. We're not requiring it. I believe the police department already does studies in connection with placement of cameras in school zones. So the cost should be of doing a study in connection with this bill should be negligible. And as much as I think, yes, permanent improvements like speed humps, changing the contours of a road are the best solution, they are very expensive. And it, it would take decades for the county just to be able to fund the requests that are probably already in the queue for those types of improvements. So uh, I don't think that's a practical alternative. So I support the bill. Thank you. Okay, um, Vice Chair Jackson. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wanted to um, move the previous question. Yeah, I think we're pretty, thank you for that, Mr. Vice Chair. I think we're pretty well polarized on how we feel about this. I don't think anybody's mind is being changed at this point by arguments that are being put forward. Is there an objection to the motion of the previous question? Do we need to take a roll call on it? Mr. Chair, is it possible for me just to answer one question that came up? Uh, we're in the mo middle of a motion of the previous question, but I'll allow it as a comment on the previous okay, question. Okay, one comment on the previous question. Um, when we're, we've had a lot of concerns about disparity, which I share as well. I'm sorry, someone has a camera. Has a, uh, we have a, a lot of questions, rightly so, about disparities, and I've heard a lot about that today. I do want to point out that one of the concerns with the amendment was that, and the bill, was that people may not be able to make it to county council meetings in order to have their voices heard. I just want to point out that it's going to be a lot harder for them to make it to Annapolis to have their voices heard, which is okay. the way the current system is set up. Okay. Thank you with that. You. Yeah. The, uh, Since uh, I've allowed uh, Della Guyton, I'm gonna allow you also. Thank you, Mr. Chair, that was my point. When you move the previous question, then you move the previous question. So, so we're gonna so, have rules, we should all follow them. So, okay, we're back on track then, okay? Um, so the previous question has been moved and there has been no objection to it. So now we move to voting on this bill. I will point out that we are a body of 20. 11 represents a constitutional majority, regardless of how the vote is uh, is tilted. So if we, we will need 11 votes favorable for this bill to be carried forward. Here we go. Vice Chair Jackson. Yes. Delegate Allen. Yes. Delegate Bendari. No vote. Um, Delegate Cardin. No. Delegate Forbes. Yes. Delegate Grammer. No. Delegate Guyton. Yes. Delegate uh, Speaker Jones. Yes. Delegate Long. No. Delegate Mangione. No. Delegate McCaskill. No. Delegate Metzger. No. Delegate Naraki. No. Delegate Pasteur. Delegate Pasteur. Mic on. No. No. Yes. Is that it? okay? Are you a yes or no? I'm sorry. Yes. 
She's a yes. Delegate Phillips. No. Delegate Stein. Yes. I'm sorry, I skipped. Delegate Ruth. Yes. Delegate Shalega. No. Delegate White. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. We have nine positive votes. The chair votes yes, but that still only brings us to 10, which is not a constitutional majority. The favorable motion fails. Um, I don't really see any reason for us to move unfavorable on this bill. By not moving favorable, the, mo the bill does not move forward. And uh, that uh, concludes the business on House Bill 1171 as amended. Uh, is For the good of the order, um, is there anything else that uh, somebody would like to bring up or talk about at this time? We sometimes have people have letters and things. I think, uh, Delegate, you might have something for us. Yes, thank you all for that uh, deliberation. I do. I have in your inboxes, I have a letter to Baltimore County Public School Board of Education and also Dr. Williams um, asking them, and please read the letter and decide if you want to sign on, asking them to involve elementary school student families in decisions about boundary studies for um, for middle and high schools because they will be the ones most affected by those decisions. And then we had a lot of conversation about that last week when we had Dr. Williams here. So I have drafted this lovely letter and I would love to have those of you who are interested in supporting it, let me know, let's say by next Friday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order before we uh, adjourn? Seeing none, I call this meeting adjourned. Okay. Keep your eye out. Uh, we yes. may not have a bill business next week, but we certainly do have people doing briefings and we'd love to have people be there to listen in. Uh, we'll be informed of who's coming to talk to us. Have a great day, everyone. See you in about a half an hour. <laughs>